Hello the internet, welcome back. So there's a lot of craziness going on in the world right now between the COVID-19 uh, pandemic and all the riots and God knows what else is coming. <laughs> um, but you know, there's probably a million channels talking about all that stuff right now. But I don't want to talk about any of that. There's so many people talking about that ad nauseum right now. Let's just not even go into that. And I'm going to, for the most part on this channel, I'm staying away from topics like that. Unless it's something I feel like I really have an interesting insight to offer. And, um, and it'd be productive to offer it. So, today, we're going to take a look at my van. I told you in the last video that um, I gave you a brief history about the van. Which uh, Let me tell you a little bit more about the van. But I'm also going to give you a tour. So, I found this van about three years ago. And um, I went to a website called Search Tempest. And Search Tempest is like a site where you go that it's linked to all the different Craigslist in the whole nation. So you do one search and it searches all the Craigslist. Initially, I was going to get a Sprinter van. And uh, because I've heard they get like 25 miles per gallon. And, uh, you know, they got the high tops and all that kind of stuff. You can get them with four wheel drive. Seemed like a decent vehicle. But as I started looking into doing a waste oil conversion on it, everything I'd read and all the resources I'd found, people say, do not do a waste oil conversion on one of these engines. And it's because they're, it's a newer style diesel, so they have a lot more sensors and electronic parts and all that, whereas my engine is purely mechanical. There's no electronic parts at all, uh, other than the starter. So uh, it, it's just a more stable engine, better system, and uh, and it's more ideal for what I'm trying to use it for. Another reason is this is considerably wider. I mean, it feels much larger than one of those Sprinter vans where if you've ever been in one of those that are fully built out like a camper, uh, you just got a very narrow aisleway down the center and it just feels very cramped. I mean, in the shower, you feel like you got to tuck your elbows in them. Uh, this, this feels really roomy and wide open. And another nice thing is instead of having those weird, you know, curves, that you would have in a standard style of vehicle. This is a box. It's all square. It's very easy to frame. Uh, you don't have to do any weird jig cuts. So that's also a huge benefit for building uh, the vehicle out. Hey, Leo. Come say hi. You all remember Leo, don't you? Leonard, go lay down, Bubba. I, I uh, searched, searched Tempest. I found the vehicle in Las Vegas. Went out there, test drove it. It was apparent immediately that it had pretty severe transmission issues. And I think they were trying to sell it initially for like $7,000. And uh, just kept on talking them down until I got them down to 3,500. And then I also, and then we went $1,000 higher to 4,500. And that was to cover the cost of shipping. So the deal was for $4,500, I owned the vehicle and he was also gonna have it shipped to Salt Lake on a flatbed. So I got it out to Salt Lake and um, and I took it to a friend's transmission shop and it just kind of got backburnered for two years. And I finally, um, and, and I was basically gonna do it on trade. I'd done a lot of favors for that friend and he you know, said he was gonna help me out, but it just never happened. So finally I just said, look, I'll pay you. I'll just pay to have it fixed. And so he finally gets around to it and uh, took, it took quite a while to get it fixed. I knew even when I left the shop with it that it still wasn't running what, like what it should. Uh, it didn't feel fixed to me. I knew it was going to eventually break down, but at that point, it was, there was really it was it was either just drive it until it breaks down and then get it fixed, or I could literally just take it to another shop and just pay a whole bunch of money to get it fixed again. So I decided I would just drive it until it broke down. So that was about 10,000 miles before it just totally had a complete transmission failure. And I took it to another shop, another good buddy of mine that owned the transmission shop. And uh, rather than doing it on trade or anything like that, um, we just did cash. And and I, he's a little more expensive than some shop. He's not the most expensive, but I know that he stands behind his work and he does good quality work and his people are knowledgeable because I've worked there at his shop quite a few times. I trust him. And uh, so altogether, it was about $8,000 that I put into it uh, for a brand new transmission, two new deep cycle batteries, and they added 
a cold air intake, which these vans don't normally have because it's a fleet vehicle, they have a block heater. So the idea behind that is, uh, you know, at the end of the day when they're done driving the vehicle, if it's cold weather, then they just plug it in wherever their the place of business is, and then the block heater keeps it warm throughout the night, and the next day it just starts right up. But if you're somebody like me, where you're not gonna have a place to plug in every night, that doesn't really work. So I would have these really long cold cranks uh, in, in cold weather where it just didn't want to start for like three minutes and it's just chugging out so much smoke trying to start and it just can't be great on the starter and it's not great on the batteries. So uh, they added this cold air intake out of a uh, Dodge truck and it's essentially just like a little piece of chicken wire that gets hot whenever you flip the switch they installed on my dash and uh, it, it heats the incoming air. And so uh, if, if my engine's not starting because it's too cold, I flip that switch and then wait for a few seconds and then crank it and it starts right up. So that's been invaluable. And uh, the name of that shop is Tip Top Transmission. I just want to give them a shout out because they did really great work. They're based out of Salt Lake City, Utah. They're honest people and they do good work. So if you're uh, ever needing uh, transmission or, or anything, that's another thing that's really cool about this shop is they do everything. They're going to be doing my waste oil conversion also. And they're also going to be fabricating my rear door. So, uh, good resource to have. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description. So anyways, yeah, so this is like three years later, basically two and a half years later, I finally get it to where it's running great now, and so I've been building it out. And um, I just barely started doing a little bit of framing here. I've been working this really awesome construction job uh, out in Eagle Mountain, Utah, building this really cool big structure. And uh, it's fun because we get to get up like nice, like really high heights and do kind of scary work. It's just kind of fun. I like it. And um, anyway, so I've been uh, kind of just buckling down and making a bunch of money and trying to get a little cushion, you know, and obviously pay off everything that I just had done on my van. While I'm working this job, there's just constantly wood scraps that are just kind of getting thrown in a waste pile. That are, uh, it's typically really large pieces of wood that are used for braces. So whenever you put up a large wall, you've got to have these big 16-foot 2x6s that hold the wall up and make sure that it doesn't fall while you're doing all the adjoining sections of the wall. So um, those end up getting lots of nails in them, and sometimes they split and they're doubled over and you know two pieces together, and they're, it's just not super usable wood without putting a lot of work into cleaning it up and making it usable wood. So they, it pretty much goes to waste. And so I was just sitting there at the job site, you know, living in my van there. And every day when I get off work, I would just think, man, I've got all these tools available to me. I've got all this scrap wood. I should start framing out my van. And uh, I, I knew it wasn't, what I was doing wasn't going to be permanent. It was uh, more just to kind of work out some of the ideas in my head and see how well the layout is gonna work. So let me take you guys back here so I can show you. So right here, this is going to be my shower. And as you can see, it's a nice, pretty good size shower. You can get in here, you can stick your elbows all the way out and not touch walls. So you got a lot of space. And that was super important to me. And then right here across from it, uh, which is kind of looking like my closet right now, but that's not gonna be my closet, that'll be my toilet right here and then I'll have a floor safe built underneath the toilet and then uh, on this side this will basically be like a broom closet and then uh, more storage for like toiletries and stuff like that and I'm doing a cassette toilet if uh, and if you're not familiar with what that is it has a uh, upper chamber and a lower chamber the lower chamber stores all your uh, black water waste the upper chamber is clear water and um, and that's what you um, uh, they have a little pump on it so you can flush and and then whenever you're done you just pull the top part off and Leo's trying to catch him a fly did you get it and so yeah it, it comes apart you've got these these two different parts in the bottom chamber uh, completely seals off and then you can take it to like a porta potty or like a public restroom like in a gas station or something like that and you just open up the lid and you dump it down the toilet to flush it it's still kind of nasty but in my mind that was a lot less nastier than having to deal with a black water tank and that big long accordion poop tube you got to deal with and finding official dump sites and most of the time you got to pay for it and then you're dealing with considerably larger amounts of waste whenever you're dealing with it. So to me, the portable toilet just seemed a lot more practical. And then I'm going to worry about the nasty black water tank. 
So, okay, that's that's the first section. This is um this is the bathroom area, basically, right? Okay. So moving back from the bathroom. Now we're coming back and uh this is basically my kitchen. Now right now the way that this is configured, it's not gonna stay like this. It's gonna be really close though, but I'll explain to you how it's gonna be different. So this right here that you can see that's like kind of outlined, that's gonna be my sink. And I'm doing a full size sink, not one of those little dinky RV sinks, which a lot of people do. I feel it's a little redundant to do two sinks. Some people they'll do like a bathroom sink and a kitchen sink. That's too much, man. I'm a step away from my kitchen sink. It's, you're such a small space, why would you have two sinks? So it just makes more sense. So I'll actually have my vanity mirror, we'll go back here behind this, and uh, so that'll double as both sinks. I'm gonna have this really cool system I've been looking into, and it's an infinite shower loop. So I've got my main water tank right here. That's my 30 gallon water tank, and that'll pump five gallons to a little five gallon tank here, and I'll, it'll have a water heater that hit, hits it before it actually comes in there or whatever. I'm still kind of working out some of the logistics of how that works out. But um, anyways, it comes here and I'm going to have another five gallon tank here. And then there will be a five stage filter with a char charcoal filter and a UV light filter. And then so and a heat exchanger. So whenever that all pipes over here to the shower, and I turn that on over here, uh, you're just using that five gallons in a loop. And it keeps on reheating it as it goes through and it's cleaning it. And uh, if I wanted to, I can take an hour long hot shower off of five gallons of water. Now they say with these systems that you can do uh, like a week's worth of showers on it. I'm gonna do a single shower on it and then I'll just take a really long shower and then I'll dump it. And then I just won't be taking a ton of showers. Uh, I think, I know some people think it's gross, but I don't need to shower more than really twice a week unless I'm doing something where I'm getting really nasty and gritty. So, okay, so let's just get past that. Move this GoPro stuff over here. So this is my induction cooker. And these induction cookers are really cool because they're very energy efficient. Uh, the heat is instant on them. It's not like your typical like smooth top um, electric stove that you're gonna see. This is totally different, uses a different technology, uses uh, magn uh, magnets somehow. And uh, like if you have a, a pan that you're like using a stainless steel pan, it's not real stainless steel, like you try to stick a magnet to it and it won't stick, then it won't work on this. But this will boil water in 60 seconds. And uh, you know, they say professional cooks like gas stoves. I disagree. I think they like induction, induction cookers because these are precise. You know, with a gas stove, you basically have like this little sliding scale meter of low to high. There's no precise setting on this. If you want, you can set it to exactly 200 five degrees precisely so that's kind of cool so now this over here which is currently like my little office slash recording studio that's going to change um, that's actually going to move to this side i've decided to keep all the water stuff on one side so, and then my battery bank will be here underneath this uh section where my um, basically you want to distribute your weight over your wheel wells water batteries right so on this side, this whole thing right here is gonna move to this side. And I'll have my big desk area right here. And there'll be a 50 inch TV, which I just got the mount for down here. And that'll actually be mounted right here, but it has that swivel mount to where I can swing it right in front of my workstation. Or whenever I've got this back door all finished out, I mean, it work even as I have it now, but then I can swing it out the back and have my TV out the back if I want. Um, this is the bed, obviously. I've got all this storage underneath the bed. And if you look down here on the floor over the wheel wells, I've built what I call a loft, because it's just a little step up. And I did that so that my little storage area back here would have more space. You see, I got like my skis right here, my kayak paddles and all that. It's nice for stuff like that. So I can uh, stick some longer stuff up in there. And as I start eventually getting more tools and all that, you know, that'd be a place where I could put like maybe a collapsible ladder, shovels, rakes, that kind of stuff. It's, uh, and otherwise that space is kind of just wasted anyways. Uh, I figured it made more sense to do that. So uh, anyway, so since this is gonna move over to this side, uh, this is actually just gonna be continued uh, part of the kitchen. That way I got a little bit more counter space for preparing food and I love to cook. And we're gonna get into that in the channel too. I'm super gourmet about it too, man, I like to, I'm a big believer in presentation. If it looks good, it tastes good. 
so and then that gives me a little more space on my counter for um, things like blenders and other you know small appliances should I want them so um, that's my kitchen side over here and there'll also be cabinets that'll come down like a regular you know kitchen from the ceiling you know about yay high and then for the countertop, what I'm going to do on this is, uh, I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but it's a Japanese technique that's it's pronounced, or excuse me, it's spelled S-H-O-U-S-U-G-I-B-A-N, something like that, Shusugiban, I think. And uh, it's where they take wood and they char it until it starts to get like that alligator skin look to it. And then uh, you do like a deep pour of some type of like acrylic over it or polyurethane or something like that to finish it out and it looks amazing and so I'm gonna do that with this but you've probably seen some of these ones where they take live edge wood and then they'll uh, like have it to where like it looks like a stream going down the center and they'll pour something decorative in the center with an acrylic so I think I'm gonna do that I'm gonna get some type of uh, kind of live edge looking wood that I can do uh, down th this strip here I'm gonna do the the char on it and then I'm gonna do some kind of really cool looking acrylic fill on it so that's the plan on these. And then the fronts of all these cabinets, my uh, my buddy who I'm working for right now out in Eagle Mountain uh, is really good with uh, finished carpentry and he's gonna help me with some of this stuff. I can't remember what the style is that he told me, uh, but it's where it completely hides all of your studs and all that. So from the front, all you see is just the faces of all your drawers and your cabinets and all that. So that's gonna look really nice. And the, all the faces of that, I'm also gonna do in that same style with the kind of crackled alligator char look. And um, this is just a temporary refrigerator. It's a little $50 comp uh, compressor. I think that's with the style uh, refrigerator from Walmart for $50. Uh, that's just for right now. Eventually the one I'm gonna get is like a, it's like $800 and it's the chest style ones that open from the top and they're way more efficient. And uh, you can also set two different uh, zones in them, like if you wanted to do a freezer, or, or rather you can change the, you can get two of them. You could have one that's a freezer and one that's a fridge, and they can change, like you can make them both fridges or both freezers or whatever. Um, so that's those, and that's gonna, that's gonna be a big step up. And I'm also gonna get a toaster oven that doubles as an air fryer. And uh, yeah. And I used to have a microwave. I got rid of that because after I got my induction cooker, I never used it and, and I knew I wouldn't really use that much. It was just kind of a temporary thing so I could have a way to prepare food while I was waiting on framing shit out a little bit more. So on this side over here, I'm getting a washer dryer combo, which I'm not sure how many people are actually familiar with these, but they run on 110 as opposed to your regular like 220 type of washers and dryers. So they're lower power. And, uh, and it's, it's two in one, it's still like a front loader, like a tumbler style um, washer dryer, but it's two in one. They're, it's both a washer and a dryer. Leo, hey, it's on your tits, dude. So then they're, and they're, they're really compact. They're not that big. So it only stands about, uh, about this tall and it's about that same depth. So um, yeah, that'll go right here. And then, so that'll come across from the height of where that's at. Uh, and then from here down, this will be drawers, kind of like these little temporary ones I've gotten here. And then from there up, this will be my actual closet where I can actually hang clothes instead of having like little hooks like I've got right now. So we've got bathroom, we've got wardrobe, we've got office, bedroom, storage, loft storage, uh, water tank, and uh, basically this is all kitchen. And uh, yeah, so that's basically the van. Let's, uh, let's check out the outside. It's not too fancy right now. It's, uh, it's literally, it was white when I bought it and I just painted it with flat black house paint with a roller and a brush. And uh, you know, I'm not too worried about it looking pretty. Uh, I didn't want a nice expensive paint job because the first time I get a little nick or scratch in it, I mean, it's gonna, not make me happy. This is no big deal. I have to patch it up, but there's a lot of places you can tell I got to patch them. It's cheap. Paint the whole thing for forty dollars, and it actually looks really nice with a nice fresh coat of paint. Um, so yeah, there she is. And I've uh, I've added my own headlights. The ones that came on it were not very great, and these are pretty awesome. They've got the focused lens uh, beam, so they uh, you see a lot better with these much sharper beam. 
It does have a rear camera. Eventually I'm gonna do a 360 camera system um, where there's four cameras that all combine together to give you a full 360 view. But it, it basically it makes navigating a lot easier when you're in tight and confined spaces because I, surprisingly for as big as this vehicle is between this rear camera and the big mirrors uh, you actually have pretty good visibility and it's not as hard to drive as you would think it would be but the 360 camera system will make it tremendously easy so let's take a peek up on the roof really quick now i've got 600 watts of solar panels up here that's my kayak that's my hang glider and uh, eventually I'll do this a lot nicer. As you can see, this is a fiberglass roof. It's the only part of the vehicle that's fiberglass. And I am eventually going to reskin that with aluminum. Now this rear door, which is still a roll up from the original, I don't like it. It leaks, uh, it's, uh, it squeaks, it's noisy. Uh, it doesn't have a proper seal on it. That's where most of my cold comes in. It's where most of my heat goes out and vice versa. Um, and then uh, these tracks go all the way up in my ceiling. The door goes up in the ceiling. It just, uh, it's not very practical. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be hiring a metal fabricator. This is going to completely replace this door with a totally custom one. So it will be like kind of like a cross bar that comes across right here. And probably a section from like here to here, something like that, about the depth of the bed. It'll all just be, you know, metal plating facing. But from here down, this is going to be a drop down, kind of like a tailgate or something like that. I might even have two different doors open sideways. I haven't decided for certain yet. Uh, I suppose I'll discuss that with the fabricator and see what they recommend. And I've been talking with friends too, getting their opinion. But I know on the top one for certain what I want to do is have one that opens so it's down like this and goes up like a canopy, kind of like a food truck, right? Whenever they open it up and it's just the, the serving window. So I'll have that here in the back and that'll make it so uh, I can, you know, have a nice view at night and a nice breeze whenever I want to let the air in, whenever I want to have uh, a view, I can do that. And it also gives me a little bit of shade up top. And as a bonus of that too, whenever I swing my TV out, it gives it a little bit of shade for my TV so uh, you can see the screen better. Yeah, I guess that's the van so far. I don't think there's anything else I could tell you about it or show you. Uh, I'll check in with you like a week or so or something like that. Sound good? Cool. Thanks for hanging out with me. Peace.